and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, a hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hello, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. My name is Jen Liddy and I'm your host. And this month I'm exploring all the things that have to do with what other people think about your choices. So maybe you've noticed the people in your life are going to have an opinion about what you do, how you do it, and maybe even whether you should do it. And today's particular lesson is how to stop taking anything personally. I want to share a story of a moment that wasn't actually about me, but I wanted to think it was about me. Here's the situation. I had asked a friend to coffee, and in the middle of our conversation, she rolled her eyes at me. I wasn't supposed to notice she was doing it, and honestly, I'm not even sure she knew she was doing it. Here was the problem. I think it was that I was starting a coaching business after leaving my fitness studio business, and I want to clarify It's not that this was a problem for me. I had been burned out and not getting paid. So I was on an upswing after all that nonsense. What I I did was I'd compared my skills to the needs that I saw in my community. And I noticed a lot of people I knew needed to get out of their own way so that they could accomplish the shit they wanted to accomplish. And I realized I had the skills to teach people how to get out of their own way and accomplish the shit they wanted to accomplish. So to me, it seemed like a perfect fit. I was about to go from fitness studio owner to accountability coach, which was admittedly a completely made up job. So I'd called this friend as a target market research interview, which I have all of my clients do because it's one of the most vital parts of starting a business and many people skip it. I knew that uh, I wanted to talk to creative, busy women like her, and I wanted to find out what kept them from starting, running, and growing their businesses. She was one of about 30 interviews that I had set up, and I was taking serious notes. And at first, she was super happy to give me her insights. She was telling me her story, sharing her dream vision for her coaching business. And somewhere in the middle of a sentence, I could see it on her face. She had a realization. She had spent $11,000 on a coaching certification and she wasn't using it. And here she was telling me about all the reasons why she hadn't put it into effect yet. And I think it just kind of hit her. Here she was, an official coach. She'd done the training, read the books, did the homework, finished her apprenticeship, but she wasn't executing. She was not running a business. And as she was telling me why, I think she heard everything that she was saying for what it was, which were excuses. Our brains are really good at taking excuses and making them into reasons. And we can do that for a long time. And we truly believe it in our brains. But sometimes when we are particularly vulnerable with ourselves or with someone else, we can see our reasons for what they usually are, which is bullshit excuses. And my coffee date had just had a big aha moment. And I was there as a very irritating witness to her. Here's the thing. She had bought the ticket a very expensive ticket. As a matter of fact, she'd waited in line and had decided not to take the ride. I wasn't judging her for not taking the ride. It was that she had this moment where she became pissed that I hadn't followed the rules and was about to take the ride without a proper ticket. It was kind of almost like I had cut the line. Since she said to me, so you're going to become a coach without any training. And I didn't want to get defensive or overly explain myself. And I didn't want to explain everything I'd already done, which is, 
gotten two master's degrees in education and training and development, having done extensive training to teach personal development to college students and college faculty. I had created a brick and mortar business from the ground up. And I knew deep inside that these things had given me more than enough experience and education to at least get started. And then I knew that whatever I needed to learn after that, I'd learn along the way because that's how growing a business works. I didn't need to tell her that I'd invested far more than $11,000 in my education, my degrees, and my trainings, in addition to the thousands of hours I'd already put into the work of becoming who I was at that point. I didn't need to tell her that I was currently in a $5,000 coaching program to get me exactly where I needed to be. And I didn't tell her because I just felt like it would be defensive and offensive, frankly. And that was the moment that she rolled her eyes. So I took it personally. I thought at first, oh, this is, you know, I didn't go the proper route. I don't have the proper certification. My imposter syndrome started to flare up. I I really was taking it personally. And then I realized that this eye roll was way less about me and more about the fact that I was taking action And I had less experience, less training, and less legitimacy than she did in her eyes. It was like she had seemed to realize in that moment that if I could do it, so could she. And then she realized that the only thing holding her back was her own choices. And as you can imagine, this is a hard moment for somebody. I didn't want her to feel annoyed with me or angry or even disappointed in herself. All I wanted was her to respect my choices and respect me. What I really wanted was for her to start her business because people need what she has to offer. And I just wanted her to know, I'm not here to compete with you. I'm just here to support you and inspire you. But she had rolled her eyes and I had noticed. And so the vibe had shifted. It definitely shifted between us. And I had a choice. I could get defensive and explain all the things I'd already explained to you, or I could just let it be and not take it personally and move on. So I want you to guess what I chose. Ultimately, I chose not to feel shitty. I chose to remember that this wasn't my bullshit. This wasn't my problem. I literally let her think whatever she wanted to think because truly people have to work through their own stuff before they can hear your version of the truth. So I couldn't take it personally. It was far more about her than it was about me. And I guess it was just a catalyst So this tool is something I teach my clients because we often get the opportunity to practice it. Like here's another example. A client called me. It was kind of a 911 call for her. She was in tears about a difficult customer who was challenging her pricing. And I knew we were dealing with the same thing that I was dealing with at that coffee date, someone else's bullshit. And this client was in a sobby tailspin because one of her clients had complained about her pricing and told her she was too expensive. So she had called me to rehash and troubleshoot. And as we processed her feelings of stupidity and incompetence and injustice, she wanted to complain. I mean, we've all been there, right? When something is difficult, we want to complain. And so I said to her, you know, this client is a gift for you. Let's figure out what this is really about. And have you ever done anything like this, like taken a situation personally, which is really not about you? I mean, we know that when we do this, it, it kills us. We have to instead find the gift in these situations and ask ourselves, what's this person teaching us? So when I asked my client, what is she teaching you? My really wonderful, highly coachable client had a moment of silence. And she said that all she realized she had to do was show her value and know her value. And if her customer couldn't see that, then it's not her job to convince her. She realized she couldn't take it personally. And these are hard lessons because I've personally had clients say things to me like, wow, I had no idea you were so expensive. I have to ask permission before I can say yes. People have said like, will you send me a list of all the people you've worked with so I can decide if I want to work with you? Or I want to know exactly what results you've gotten your other clients. And the one that I hear a lot is, I need a script so I can convince my husband that this is a good use of our money. And all of those things, like I could take them really personally. And they, and I I promise you, they have sent me spinning in the past. I felt exactly like my clients did. I 
cannot honor those requests because they just don't even help the potential client. Every client that I work with is searching for a different transformation. So I don't waste my time convincing anyone. I I mean, I know that in my soul, but every time I hear those objections, it throws me into a tailspin because I take them personally. I've really had to work to find the gift. So let me break it down for you how I do this. Each request has to do with distrust. The potential client thinks she doesn't trust that I can deliver the value I say I do. And maybe I haven't made it clear that I can. So that's why I constantly refine my system and I'm always reflective about it. But maybe she really just doesn't want to make the changes she says she wants. And frankly, that's not on me. People are looking for ways out of making changes. And when they ask questions or, or suggest that you your pricing is not right, it's not about you. It's really about them. They might not be willing to make the change and they're searching for an excuse. And whatever it is, I know I can't take it personally and neither can you. So how can you start to look for the gift? Is this an opportunity for you to examine yourself? For sure. Examine, like, is your pricing too high? Does your program work? Are you serving your clients? Okay, great. Take a look. Be reflective. But no matter what, I want you to know, there will always be someone who balks at what you do, what you say, what you offer. Here's an example. I could say to somebody, hey, I have some free time. Do you want a free one-hour coaching session? And that someone very likely could say, wow, a whole hour? I don't know. I don't really have an hour. That's so much time. So do you see what I mean? All of this stuff, it's not about us. It's not about you. It's about them. If you can ask yourself, what's the gift here for me? If you can just know your value and show your value, you will be much happier. I promise. So think about any current pain in the ass situation that you're dealing with. What's the gift inside of it? Are you taking it personally? If so, that's probably grinding you way down. Stop taking everything personally. Or you can stay married to your misery and miss seeing the gift. So is your business not going so well? Are your relationships not going so well? Is your relationship with yourself not going so well? This conflict is a gift. And if you can stop long enough to see that it's not happening to you, that it's happening for you, and stop taking it personally, you will be so much better off. But sometimes we can't see it for ourselves because we get stuck in loops that keep us feeling low. They keep us from taking action or seeing our value. Just remember, your job is not to convince others of your value. Your job is to see your own value. And when you do that, you can really detach from taking things personally. This is the work and it's not easy. And it's why coaches exist. Because if we could do this work on our own, we'd already have done it. So ask yourself, what's the gift in my current shitty situation? How can you make it work for you? Now, I know all of this is easy for me to say and it's easy for you to understand, but it's very hard to do. It is so hard to do. So don't keep suffering. Reach out. Reach out and talk to me. We'll work through what you want, where you're stuck, and actually how to get you through it. Like create a plan just for you. I promise you, you don't have to keep feeling shitty in a recurring situation. You can shift the power and get to a place where you're not taking things personally and you realize people aren't doing things to you. They're just doing things. I hope this helps you feel a little bit better in a, in a situation that's causing you some pain or discomfort. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for listening all the way through. And please share this episode with somebody that you know takes things personally and needs some help to stop doing that. See you next time. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. 
I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.